NX Solar is a community-driven open source project and we are in the community building phase. We've just recently uh, accumulated some, some developers. I have uh, one of our lead developers, Alexi here, who will hopefully uh, show you guys a demo of how our token is supposed to work. Um, briefly about the background of NX Solar, what we aim to do uh, is to bring solar power uh, investing available for everybody. So essentially we're talking about tokenizing, token, tokenizing of, of um, real world assets such as power plants or buildings. And what we want to do is we want to contract these uh, solar, uh, solar plant in installation companies who are doing retrofitting. So installing uh, solar panels to existing buildings and we want to crowdfund their projects and then uh, transfer the ownership to the token holders. So that's essentially, in the nutshell, the basic idea of what we try to do here. Um, we, uh, the, the aim of the game, however, is to create a peer-to-peer -peer energy um, sharing network, which will be called the NX network. And each, each individual who would be purchasing these tokens would be, uh, in fact, owning a part of the network. And, and all the revenue generated by said network would be channeled 100% to the token holders. So this would be a paradigm shift in, um, in the ownership and uh, management and of, of uh, power plants and real life assets. We, we, we plan to incorporate voting mechanisms. Like for example, if, you have, if you're staking your tokens, you get some um, uh, elevated uh, voting, voting powers and you get some uh, bonus uh, dividends for that. So you will get a bigger reward if you participate. So we want to incentivize the token holders to actually participate and uh, make the network grow better. So that's the ideal behind this project. So I already mentioned about tokenizing uh, solar power plants. What, how we imagine it would happen is, is that um, we kick off mini ICOs, what we call them, um, for each an individual project that can range, well, if you think about a solar power plant, it could be anything between 100,000 or 100 million. So there's really no uh, limitation of what kind of uh, project we can fund as long as we have somebody to build it who, who is able to take the task. So the idea is to crowdfund uh, whatever the community deems, uh, deems the best at, at the, the later part. Of course, in the beginning, we will, we will have to fill the pipeline with, with some uh, feasible projects ourselves. And uh, we're probably going to have a pilot project somewhere in the Central Europe where we ha already have a, a partner company who can, who can do those installations for us. And basically, the minimal viable product at this point of time would be an investment plat platform. So you would only uh, gain ownerships and, and uh, through the tokenization. So we would only raise amount of, mo uh, amount of money necessary to build that plant. And then we would kick off another ICO. So we, would, uh, we, we can have like parallel mini ICOs going on. As many as uh, there's like, uh, if there's demand for more power plants, then sure, there's, no, there's really no limitation because there's these companies who are actually doing this in real life all the time. The only thing that is uh, sometimes maybe needed is the funding. And this is what we try to provide there. And of course, uh, yes, passive income is mentioned because um, we feel like in, in the poor regions, for example, in, in Africa, where there's huge solar potential, we have uh, some contacts there right now, there's a lot of potential and, and it's, it's quite hard to harness that potential. So through this uh, crowdfunding platform, we could actually bring these solar communities to places that would not necessarily be uh, within the bar power grid, for example. So this would not be connected to the power grid. This would be a peer-to-peer -to -peer, uh, energy uh, service network. So I'm thinking solar cities somewhere, somewhere in the suitable locations probably would be a viable, uh, viable way to go about it. All right, a little bit about the functionality. So I, I mentioned about staking uh, and, and the tokens, and we call them uh, sparking up and fizzling down, which, which would mean that to gain voting rights, to be able to influence the direction of NX network, 
uh, you would have to lock up your tokens, so spark them up, so it will spark up some projects, right? And then you have uh, voting rights to the pi pipeline to actually pick and, uh, you know, hopefully through game theory, pick the right, correct projects to get yourself the best uh, possible dividend paid off. Because then, uh, of course, it will be in uh, token holders' best interest to pick the most successful projects. So um, we, we intend to incorporate that kind of a voting right um, thing. And then uh, fizzling down means once you want to liquidate, you are, of course, uh, you can do that. But we would lock them up for like, let's say, 14 days to give you a little bit of a cooling off period to prevent panic selling, pretty much. And this, uh, this has been a functioning model, for example, Steam it is, has been doing that. It's called uh, powering up and powering down. So only mild, mildly ripping on that. A little bit about the um, pipeline before I, I let Alexis speak. So this is how we imagine it would work. So the investors would provide uh, funding for the projects. We have, a, we have a project from the pipeline that needs funding. So the investors come in, uh, they fill out the ICO. Once it's funded, we move, move on to the next project or we run them parallel. And once the project is built, and it starts generating electricity, which can then be sold uh, for profit. And this profit will be then channeled to a treasury from where we can uh, reinvest in uh, new projects and then um, channel the profits to investors. Right now, um, probably the model is going to be, like I said, 100% for investors, but there's also a possibility to reinvest in, in new projects. And of course, there's expenses. so. So after expenses, all the profit will go in one way or another back to the investors, and that's the whole point. So we want to be as decentralized, uh, leaderless organization as possible. Of course, there's a degree of centralization because we are founding this and putting it into motion. But we, what we want to accomplish is that uh, the community will take over and then if one of us will uh, step away, the project won't be hurt. The idea should be good enough to with, withstand that. So that's basically what we're building on here. Uh, we're not asking for money right now. And if you want to help, you can, you're free to do so. You're free to join our Telegram and the conversation. And we are looking for like very enthusiastic people to help us develop the idea further. But I think that's enough from me. Alexi, would you like to talk a little bit about the token development, which is really exciting to me? lead developers in this X. So what we've been doing right now is basically developing a free MVP product of this platform called Pipeline. Uh, and what is this Pipeline? It's a, a distributed app uh, running on the Ethereum blockchain where you can basically in the free MVP app you can simply get, get these NX tokens and use them to uh, Gain, stake them and use them to gain additional voting power. So I can show you quickly how it works. Yeah, we're back. Unfortunately, uh, we cannot get it to work as intended. But this is basically what it currently looks like. So you can actually in this demo version, you can request this NX token, which is an ERC20 compatible token and you can actually now generate yourself out of thin air these tokens this is just a demo this is not the actual <laughs> token don't worry about it and what you can also do is like we said stake these tokens so you can stake an amount of tokens and then you can gain additional voting power and dividend ratio and with these tokens you can then vote either test project one or test project two. So these are like the solar pro project Nico talked about. But this is a working demo. So if you go to this address and have this MetaMask wallet, it's on the Robsten test network, so you can try it out. But so that's basically it for now. <laughs> Do you have something else to uh, to talk about the development pro process or whatever you want to say about the development or wrap pro it up? 
oh yeah, we have a, me and two other developers, we just started out building this, so it's only been a few months, so if there are any developers, we are looking for new people to join the project. So. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alexi. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty much it for now. And like, uh, like I said, and like Alex said, we are, we are looking for more people, talented people to help us build it, uh, build it the best possible project we can. And I'll, I'll be happy to take your questions now, but do keep in mind, I'm a generalist, so I will defer in technical questions to Alexi and uh, and other more technical people. Yes. So how do you differ from the other solar projects on blockchain? I mean, there are a couple of projects out there already. Right, that's a good question. There's uh, quite a few actually, and I, f I feel, I think there's one that is very close to us. I forget the name. I just heard of it. Our approach is different from the mini ICO perspective. So we, and, and the tokenization perspective. So we aim to tokenize the ownership of power plants and uh, we aim to only fund the projects and expenses and then go to another one. So I guess that's the difference for now. Uh, in the future, of course, uh, we, we aim to develop the token to be much more smart and you know, interact with the, within the NX network, which will be like, there will be IoT, there will be like um, devices, hopefully can share energy with, with each other, nodes in the, in the network can share energy with, with, e with each other, make microtransactions. Microtrans and, and such things, but that's of course in the way in the future. Not right now, we are working on the MVP, uh, which is simple uh, investment platform. Um, but, uh, uh, you, I, I guess this will be pretty easily considered as a security. It is a security uh, platform. Uh, so yeah. No so questions. It's so an excellent, excellent question. question. I was expecting this. <laughs> that's uh, everybody's lips right now because the regulation, the, the whip is coming down this year. Everybody knows that. We want to take the approach, we want to provide the regulator solutions instead of problems and questions. So before we have something that we think that can work, we're not going to approach them. But we are working on that actively. And we are trying to show them like, hey, you know, we're not going to, we're not trying to burn the world down. We're just, you know, trying to make it a little bit better. And here's our idea. And, you know, maybe they can work with us. So I think that's the approach. You mean, have you done ICO? Already? No, no. This, is, this is my personal, personally my personal. And I don't, I'm not a huge advocate of uh, ICOs per se, but it's a great way to crowdfund projects that are otherwise uh, difficult to fund. And uh, certainly uh, tokenization is something uh, to consider. Right? Sorry? Do you have a country already, like, uh, which jurisdiction you're aiming for? Um, we are looking at several options. Right now we are looking at uh, Hong Kong, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, Estonia. And uh, we are, well like uh, Ansi mentioned, there's obvious problems with the banking sector mm -hmm. and in incorporating and uh, we decided in our last meeting we're gonna try and incorporate without a bank. Okay. That will be our first. Seems <laughs> non-trivial. <laughs> it's, it's non, it is non-trivial, <laughs> I can guarantee that. But you've got to try something. More questions? Yes. yes. So regarding the voting rights, is it only for the projects or is it the, for sure there will be some government as well in the, within the community? So will the same logic for the for voting rights apply also for the governance for the community or only for the projects? Fantastic, Fantastic question. question. We've, we've been talking about this and probably there will be implemented an, another kind of voting uh, scheme which would, uh, for example, like let's say that the founder team, um, our salaries are obviously going to be paid in, in, in tokens. So maybe there will be a lockup amount and then uh, we will have uh, once those mi uh, some of those milestones will be reached, there will be a vote with the, with the you know, uh, stakers, something like this. I, I feel like that would be appropriate. Good question. Yes. Yeah, about the staking and, and uh, voting rights. Uh, aren't you afraid of sort of a uh, power vacuum effect where the biggest 
it's open holders just to get like more stakes and, and at the same time get more voting power. I I can't say that I'm scared of anything necessarily, but uh, yeah, that's a very very good point, and that's certainly going to happen. And I feel like the only way to kind of combat that is through game theory and incentivization models to kind of like make it profitable to act the correct way. Like I mentioned earlier, like if you, if you vote for poor projects, you're going to hurt your dividends. If you vote for good projects, you're going to get more dividends. If you're very active and you're a long time staker, you might go like, let's say this is just a uh, number like 200% uh, dividends. You don't want to give that up. You want to add to that. So that, that would be like our way to go about it for now. Good question. Yes. Yeah, have you even considered Finland uh, as a domicile for this effort? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> to put it, put it bluntly. Um, although, right now, when I think about it, it's the banks, right? The, the banks are the ones that are going to kind of like cause a lot of friction. And um, if we can, in fact, incorporate without a bank, then that would be possible. But I know for a fact that in Finland, it's not possible to incorporate with a bank. So for now, no, but uh, you never know. <laughs>